Hi, my name is Noah Gift, and I'm gonna to talk to you about Google's AutoML solution. I've used it a lot in a class I teach at Northwestern and also around the world on applied computer vision. And one of the things that we do in this class is really focus on building solutions more than getting into the theory. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with theory, there's lots of important things that are, that are good to know about computer vision, but in terms of the application of computer vision, we're fortunate to be in an era where there are tools that are really plug and play. So for example, with Google AutoML, you can upload some images, uh, classify those images with a click of a button. You can then go through and download that uh, model that you didn't have to write any code for and put it onto a device. It could be an edge-based device, uh, like a TPU, for example. Uh, and I have a copy of a TPU actually right behind me. Here we go is a uh, TPU. Uh, you can see it's called a Coral uh, TPU. And what's great about this is that it has an edge-based processor. So it's able to, to do a really powerful inference or prediction right on this device. So this could be something that you could put onto, let's say a license plate reader, or you wanted to classify whether someone had a mask on or didn't have a mask on when they're walking into a store. These are the kind of technologies I think that are really important for the future. Uh, likewise, one of the things that's kind of a surprise, if we take over something like an iPhone here, uh, that this itself also has an edge-based uh, processor. So many of these technology companies, Apple, Google, they're building technology that allows you to do prediction directly on the device itself. And what's great about this is that you can couple that with the pre-trained models that you can download or that you can go through and train the model yourself, again, without writing any code. So it's a lot more like you're cooking something versus you know, going to the farm and uh, you know, harvesting wheat, right? You're, you're really building things from high level ingredients or the infrastructure. Uh, and, it, and in fact, it has a, a similarity, uh, this, this concept of you know, building applications or ML ops for computer vision to what we're currently doing with cloud computing. If you look at cloud computing, there's infrastructure as a service, which is core components like storage compute. There's platform as a service, which is higher level tools. And so really the same thing's happening. These, these building block components are coming together uh, and allows you to quickly focus on the problem, right? Not that you don't later need to focus on some of the details or the theory for more complex problems, but for many problems, it's actually very straightforward. You wanna classify an image, either it's a cat or it's not a cat, it's a dog, it's not a dog. And those kind of scenarios work very well for this AutoML to edge-based device solution. So that's what we're gonna get into next here. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's get started here with moving into AutoML with the Google Cloud Platform. I think one of the better ways to explore using AutoML is to use Quick Lab. It's probably available uh, from your university. Uh, you can get free access if you're a student, if you're an educator. Uh, also, you could pay for it as well. Uh, you can do the same thing uh, by using the uh, free cheer platform, but I like to use the Quick Labs because they're a really good step-by-step -step, uh, set of instructions. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna click on Start Lab and it's gonna ask me for uh, some credits. I'm gonna go ahead and launch this. And then what's gonna happen is that it's going to launch a private instance of Google Cloud that will allow me to build out step-by-step uh, -step what they describe in this particular lab. So this will take about a second here. And let's just scroll through here while that's provisioning and see what we're gonna do. So we're gonna use this AutoML vision system and we're gonna upload images to the UI. We're then gonna take a labeled data set and move that into Google Cloud Storage and then connect it to the AutoML Vision system with a CSV label file. So there's two steps here. There's uh, uploading the images and then also making sure that the labels, uh, which are essentially, you know, is a dog or a cat or whatever uh, classification, uh, they're ready for us. We're gonna train it and then we'll, we'll be able to do a prediction on the trained model. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, launch this thing. So I'm gonna say open uh, Cloud Console and notice that I can say use another account. And in fact, what I'm gonna do to make things a little bit simpler here is I'm gonna run these things split screen and that way we can look at both the training material and also run the lab at the same time, which I think is a good way to go 
when you're using Quick Labs. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this uh, student name here. Let's go ahead and paste this in. And again, this is a sandboxed account, uh, so you don't have to worry about charges, uh, which is very convenient. Uh, and then uh, if I go ahead and say next, it's gonna go through and ask me to fill out a few different forms. Uh, we'll go ahead and confirm everything. And it looks like we're in. So uh, I've been able to uh, launch the, the platform here. Maybe I'll shrink this a little bit just to give us a little bit more room to, to kind of check out what's going on here. And I'm gonna scroll down here and go to the first step. So first thing they want us to do is log in, which is what we did. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to need to enable the cloud uh, auto ML system. So I'm gonna go over into this uh, navigation bar here uh, and select uh, API and services. And then uh, from here, I'm gonna enable API and services and I'm gonna look for cloud auto ML. Cloud uh, auto ML. There we go. Looks like we've got it. And Let's go ahead and uh, search that one more time. It looks like I was able to have it for a second and then the dialog box popped it out. Okay, there we go. Cloud Auto ML, and I'm gonna click on Enable. This will take about a minute or so. And then uh, once we, we do that, what, we'll, what we can do is actually go right into the Auto ML system. So I'm gonna go back here and now just type in Auto ML. And we, we can go to Auto ML Vision. All right, now, now that I've got this thing uh, set up here, also uh, we're gonna use the Cloud Shell for a lot of this activity. So I'm gonna click on this Activate Cloud Shell. And what's great about the Cloud Shell is it's a free terminal, you can just play around, and it's a very powerful way to do things very quickly. And in my opinion, I think the terminal is one of the most effective ways to build uh, solutions. Uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. So let's go through here and let's double check, in fact, that we're on the right project. So we can actually go through here and just copy this command, which says, um, let's list the authentication. Here we go. And it says that uh, this is the student account, which is what I'm expecting. And then uh, if I want to list what the project is, I can go down here and list what the project is. G Cloud config list project. There we go. And we can see that um, the project is uh, what I would expect, uh, which should be matching what this project idea is over here. And then uh, now that we've got all that set up here, really we're able to go to the next step, which is I'm gonna export that project ID uh, here so that we can use it later. So this is a common thing that you'll, you'll find with the terminal is that you'll use environmental variables so that you're able to kind of run, run commands more quickly. And so this one will basically add uh, the permissions that will allow the auto ML system to work with this project. There we go, it says, uh oh, the email address of the user is, is empty. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that I also export the Quick Labs username. So I didn't do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and clear this screen here and export it. So export Quick Labs username. And I just need to grab this username here and just pop this in. There we go. And that will allow us to export it. Now I can go back up to the other command, which is gcloud project add. And this is gonna add the project ID, which is a variable. And then it's also gonna add the quick labs username, which is a variable. There we go. And now this should work. Perfect. So this is something that's important to be aware of. Again, for complex command line operations is to use uh, variables. And now if we scroll down here, we're going to go to storage and we're going to um, create a storage bucket. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to do this from the command line is I'm going to say gsutil make bucket. So MB use this project ID and then set the standard um, uh, type of storage and then use this central zone here to, to create this bucket. And then it'll create a bucket that includes the project ID in it. And then what they want us to do is go down to uh, the storage section here. So if I go through and I go to cloud storage and we go to data store, uh, let's see, actually we wanna go to, 
let's just do a search for it. Go to storage. Here we go, cloud storage. And then if we look at it, there should be one bucket. There we go, one bucket, perfect. And now that we've got that one bucket created, let's go ahead and upload some training images. So in order to train the data, it's gonna to need to have some, some data. Uh, and so we're gonna do that next here is I'm gonna go ahead and again, create a variable here so that we can work with the bucket that was created, which is this name up here. And then I'm going to use this gsutil command to copy some images that are already created there for me uh, for this lab. And these images will include the, the pictures of the clouds. So we'll go through here, we'll paste this in, and this will copy those images uh, into the bucket. And then if we look at this bucket here and we kind of refresh this, you should see, there we go. There's a bunch of images of clouds. And now if I wanted to look at each of the individual images as well, it would visualize it and I could preview it and, and, and see what it looks like. There we go, there's an image of a cloud. Okay, great. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need to tell uh, Google Cloud itself uh, where all of those images live and point that to the cloud AutoML system. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this command and what it does, it says copy the data.csv file locally. And in fact, I can just look at that real quick. Let's go ahead and look at what that looks like. And you just say cat data. You can see it's just a kind of a template that says whatever my bucket is going to be, we're going to swap that out with a new path, right? Because my bucket paths have this name inside of them. And then we're going to copy that back into the bucket. So we're going to and use the sed command, which will swap out the bucket name here. So let's go ahead and run that. So basically take their placeholder and swap it out with my bucket name. If I cat it, you can see now it's put the right path inside. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload this to my bucket. So now we have a list of all the files that are in uh, this bucket and as well as the files. And now all we have to do is go back to the AutoML Vision tab. So let's go back here and again, go to um, AutoML. Or, or vision, either one will get us to their vision. And I'm gonna click on image classification here. And what it will ask us to do to start with is that we're gonna click on new data set like this. And in order to, this, to do this, we're gonna select single label classification. So we only wanna predict one name per cloud image, right? There's not gonna be multiple names like Red, you know, red cloud or or you know, cloud with extra colors in it or or whatever. There's just going to be a type of cloud, so that will be single label classification. Let's go through and do this, and, and now um, it's going to ask, you know, where do I import the files? What's great about this approach is because we already copied the CSV file in there that has the full path. All we need to do is browse to that, which is right here go to that file, there we go, which has again all of the paths in there, and then slurp that in. So we'll go ahead and select it, and there we go. And now that we've got this thing uh, ready to go, we, we're basically able to uh, go from here. So let's go ahead and double check this one more time. Let's go ahead and grab this. We want this, we wanna say select, continue, Oh, I think we've already we've already uploaded it. So there we go. Yeah, it's uploading right now. So th this particular data set here, it should take a few moments to, you know, fully populate, uh, and we'll we'll just wait for a second. And, and you notice here it says about two to five minutes or so to to upload that data set. And once it's uploaded you will be able to see and kind of navigate through and look at the different pictures. So, so that's one thing that, that's pretty neat. We can kind of look at this and, and watch it running, but one of the things that's neat about the data set uploading mechanism is once it's fully uploaded, you're able to um, visually inspect the data. And so this could be important if you're dealing with um, company data and you maybe wanna do a final quality control just double check before you train a model that your data is as good as you, 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 you hope it can be. 
Let's look at this. Uh, we see that uh, there's a notification that says this was enabled a few minutes ago. Also now, if I click on images, great. We're able to kind of scroll through here, look at the labeled images. We see that there's three types. There's uh, Cirrus, Cumulus, Nimbus, and Cumulus clouds, and I can navigate through and look at all those clouds and, and, and take a look at each, each one of them individually, filter, et cetera, add new labels. So this is a great little mechanism here that allows me to expect, really inspect the data and uh, do things in a way that's a very high level tool. So the next thing that we're gonna do after we've done this is that um, we're gonna go through here and train our model. So really this is the fun part. And what we can do is click on the train tab here. And again, look at this, we see that there's you know, all these different um, uh, examples here of, of the, the, the different types. And we see these uh, train validation test sets. It's automatically split for us as well. So again, I don't have to do the best practices of machine learning, it, it does it for me. And I go ahead and click train and notice that it'll ask me to define the model and we just we can just call this cloud, you know, cloud classification or something like this. It doesn't want a, an underscore or a, a hyphen, so I'll take that out. And this is the other part that's really powerful is that I can actually train it to run in the cloud. And so this would be something where I could do a prediction uh, based on an API. And this is appropriate for many uh, scenarios. Or the other one is edge. And what's neat about doing edge-based training is that I could then later download that and put that into an iOS device, or I could put that into the TPU via the Coral device. Uh, and notice if I click on continue here, it's gonna ask me to select what type of training. And, and this really is important in terms of the edge-based models, is do you wanna have the best possible accuracy and notice that it's showing you that on a Google Pixel 2, there would be about a third of a second of latency, and maybe that's okay. Or do you want a trade-off where it's got slightly worse accuracy, the, the file size is a little bit smaller, but it's got uh, maybe one-eighth of a second uh, latency, or do you want the fastest predictions possible with the smallest model, and low, notice here, very, very low latency, right? So, uh, you know, essentially, 1 20th uh, of a second here in, in terms of the ability to to make a prediction or inference so if i go ahead and say let's pick this one faster prediction if i go through notice that it says uh you know recommend using three three node hours for your data set and it will give me the correct options here uh depending on what the size is and you can tweak it and, and make it a little bit bigger or, or more or less and notice if you are doing this guide on your own free tier that you can look through here and there's actually some some there's actually fairly good uh, descriptions of how long you can train your model for free using their AutoML system. So we'll go ahead and click training and now it's gonna go through and it'll take, uh, let's say like five or 10 minutes to train the model and then allow us to do a prediction. So now that we've been able to kind of get this thing uh, training here, I think one of the things that's important to be aware of is that it can take, let's say, 20 minutes or so. So I'll go ahead and, and kind of pass on that part and, and notice that you'll see at the very end, when, once this thing's finished here, you'll, you'll see something that looks more like this. It'll have a re recall uh, precision graph, which shows us the false positive, false negative rate. And then it'll give us a confusion matrix as well. So it'll show us you know, how accurate it was at its actual prediction and how much it confused it with other classifications. And in, in general, again, that's one of the powerful things about this AutoML system is the ability to uh, really click a button, train a model, and deploy it into the cloud, or in the case of AutoML systems, to take that model and then deploy it into a new environment. So, so what I can do actually to kind of go to the next step here is that uh, I'm going to go to um, just kind of log out of this system here, and I'm going to show you a pre-existing account I've got, and, and we'll go through and and I'll show you what it looks like once we've got a model uh, working. So I'm going to log into my system, and I'm going to look at an AutoML uh, example that I've got somewhere. Let's go ahead and pick this one, and let's go to 
let's maybe uh, even drag this large screen here and go to um, vision. And what'll happen once it's trained is that the AutoML solution will look like this, right? Where, where there's a, actually models here and you can see there's a cloud-based model or there's a mobile-based model. And then once it's fully trained, you, again, you can kind of look through, look at all the different labels. This is a different data set. This is for flower classification. But then the part that's interesting is if we go to test and use, is that if you've trained the edge-based model here, this is where you would go through and you would export your model as TF Lite. And you can see here, there's a quick start guide that, that's pretty helpful that shows how you can, you can really just copy this project and build out a, a, a classification system that deploys onto an edge-based device because it's using that TF Lite model. And this is really the, the incredible aspect of, of what's happening here is that you're able to go through here and um, uh, use either the, the this uh, mobile model, a JavaScript model, a core metal, core ML model, which works with Apple's uh, iOS system, and it, there's a project that you could easily deploy. And in fact, if we look at this, let's actually um, copy the link address because it's currently broken, and I'm going to change this to go to developer.apple, and notice that you can actually classify images with Vision and CoreML by just downloading this project and then swapping that CoreML file that you get into this project and you can just download the application. So in a nutshell, there's a lot of stuff you can do. This is the other one I talked about was a Coral device. You can use this Coral hardware, download it. And in fact, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward to go to one of these products like this, the, the Coral uh, TPU here. On the, on the USB accelerator and then just download that model and do a prediction. So there's a lot of ways that are, are uh, really straightforward when you're, when you're talking about high-level AutoML with the Google Cloud Platform. All right, well, that's all we have uh, for today. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end this lab and clean it up.